storms last night that uh, received uh, or reached severe limits. Tonight, I think we'll see a few more of them in this part of the country. Now, whenever we show you a map like this for our hail parameters and you see that dashed white lines in there, that's the area that we're talking about when we say the hail could be very large. We're talking two inches or greater in diameter. So think about the size of a lime or even bigger than that. We had some reports of baseball size hail last night. So hail will be possible from San Antonio all the way up into parts of Nebraska and southwestern Iowa yet again. And our, our parameters for hail are really increasing right in this area where we're starting to see the thunderstorms pop. So look out in parts of the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma on up into western parts of Kansas, but also down here into far western uh, Texas and still possible pretty much anywhere else. Those darker purple areas, though, just the areas where it's most likely our conditions are most favorable. So we need these strong updrafts to continue to help keep hail suspended and get it to grow that large. And generally, these develop with elevated storms or supercell type of thunderstorms. And our computer models have been really uh, consistent the last number of hours, really through the day today, um, showing these areas where individual storms may get started. And then the line begins to advance and grow and expand, eventually transforming into an MCS or a mesoscale convective system that would be more of a damaging wind threat and then bringing really heavy rain as this moves overnight into eastern parts of Texas as well as into parts of Oklahoma. So this is the time of the year. You know, May is the climatological peak for severe weather in the plains typically, especially when it comes to tornadoes and very large hail. And so the areas where we have that risk tonight are typical areas of where we would expect that to be, the really big stuff in particular. But notice pretty much everybody east of the Rockies um, has that chance this time of the year. It tends to see a, a few more of those hail-making thunderstorms. So we need the strong updrafts to get the big hail. When we're talking about two-inch hail or so, that's between a golf ball and a baseball size. And so those updraft speeds have to be around 70, maybe 75 miles per hour to suspend hail that large into the air. And so, of course, Chris, when our updrafts are very strong, you know we have a more violent storm. And a lot of times this develops as our storms get started very, very quickly. And I've noticed last night, but also tonight, that these storms have been but a blip on the radar. And all of a sudden, boom, we're talking about a very powerful, dangerous storm in a matter of just a few minutes. And, and Jack, if you want to stick right here, I want to get back to that uh, tornado warning. I want to show you the explosive nature of the visible satellite. Great. In just a moment. But let's take a the Weather Channel is dedicated to protecting America for this upcoming hurricane season. As of today, we are now one month away from the official start of the season. However, we've seen storms in the month of May before. And tonight we're focusing on the state of Texas and people who live or spend time there, vacation there. While most of the hurricanes happen later in the summer, including a Category 1 hurricane, Hurricane Nicholas, that was in September of 2021. A Category 4 hurricane, Hurricane Harvey, you may remember, happened closer yeah. to the peak of the season, August 2017. So with that in mind, now is the time to learn about your evacuation plan, especially if you're new to the area, your route, how it works, uh, packing, getting ready, the emergency bags, the whole thing that you need to keep you safe, your family safe, and of course your pets. Yeah, so smart to do that ahead of time. Here's a look now at the weather company's outlook for this Atlantic hurricane season. Smart advice. I think all of us kind of feel a little bit immune to these things sometimes until, of course, it happens to you. And flood insurance now. Look into it. Increasing overnight tonight and into early tomorrow morning. And so if you're an early commuter, as we take a look at tomorrow's trouble spots tonight, I really want you to be careful on the roads across parts of Texas, even into Oklahoma, northwestern parts of Louisiana. If you encounter water over the roadways, you always want to turn around and find an alternate route. It's tough to see it before the sun comes up, right? So if you can delay that commute, that might even be a good idea for you. And most of the action tomorrow also is going to be across the nation's 
Midlands midsection will have a chance of rain showers all the way into places like Chicago, into the Twin Cities, more thunderstorms in the central section of the U.S. and storms, of course, into the south. Now, we will see a little backdoor cold front into the northeast, and that could bring some rain into New England. The rest of you look okay along Interstate 95. So the severe weather threat is there tomorrow as well, but notice it's, it's a much smaller area. We actually have two areas of low pressure along the cold front here, and it's the southernmost one that's going to be more likely to to help to trigger some of the stronger to severe thunderstorms. So watch out from around Oklahoma City, stretching down towards San Angelo. Couldn't rule out some isolated storms that were severe in the lighter red areas, but a little bit less likely. So there you can see the big complex of thunderstorms. Actually, two of them. We're expecting to have one to the north and then one to the south down here. And in between, we'll see new spotty thunderstorms developing. I know that a lot of us will wake up to convection in the morning tomorrow, Chris, but I do think that we'll have enough time to to reset the atmosphere before new storms develop that would increase that chance for severe later in the day. And those storms are